she, she, she's on a dependent on ventilator, mechanical ventilator. If the electricity stops, she will die within five minutes. This is the director of the hospital, um, Dr. Hassan Khalaf. Dr. Hassan Khalaf. <laughs> this is the intensive care unit, which you know received most of the seriously injured people. And this is completely dependent on, on electricity, in case of uh, electricity is, is, is cut off. Uh, this, all these people will die immediately. We're here at a cemetery, um, and it's, it's really bizarre because these kids know exactly who's buried where. They know, they know this person, Muhammad Awad, is buried here. That person's buried there. He was killed on this date. He was killed on that day. Here's my second cousin. Here's my this. Um, they know the, they, they know their recent history vividly. It's really clear in their minds uh, what happened. It's, they, they live in a war zone. These these poor kids live right in a war zone, and for kids to know. The graveyard so well. I don't know where people are buried and where people died and how people died and some gruesome detail. And they're so acquainted with death. This is the scary thing. They're so they're so used to death and so acquainted with death. It's, it's almost normal. Well, this is their version of a, of a studio flat, I guess, because this is where they sleep, where they eat, where they cook. Everything happens in this room. <laughs> this is the kitchen. So there was, there was bombing in this area, and while she was in the kitchen, the kitchen walls, she saw the kitchen walls shake. So she's convinced that they're gonna, they're gonna collapse and if she goes back in. كل شيء ولا قطع يعني حتى لما نموت اليوم لفرين ثلاثة من العيلة ما بهم بس الباقي ودي إيش؟ Even if you're gonna kill one or two of the kids, then they die. But what about the ones who are still alive? What what are they left to live with? There's nothing to live with. How are they supposed to live? You know, you have you can't deny people food. You can't deny people water because how are they supposed to live? أنا بطن بع كل المؤسسات تعمل لنا ماء ولا لقطيار المعا ضغط سكري والله إن في المستشفى لا غير بودي كل كم من يوم كل هاي تما دوم مرميين في الشوارع وعنا مرميين زيهم في الشوارع. We need to be here. We need to be helping these people. Uh, we can't turn our backs on them, like the rest of the world. And this is the front line of Islamic Relief's work, helping the most vulnerable people in the most desperate situations. Actually, one of them said today, we're dead, we're not alive. Um, you know, we have nothing and we're more dead than we are alive. It's probably easier for us to be dead than it is to be alive. This is the level of despair that these people have reached.
I'm with uh, Yahya Abu Ida. He's um, the logistics man in Aya uh, Gaza. Um, and I'm just asking, actually, how, a, lot, a lot of people have concerned, how, how does humanitarian aid, how does Islamic relief get its aid across, across the border? Um, and I'm actually going to ask him this question because he's, he's the man for logistics. What it just said is, um, actually, because it's humanitarian work and Islamic relief work is, is known as um, completely humanitarian, they're able to actually communicate with the, with the, uh, with the Israeli side and uh, when, the, when the stuff comes into the Israeli, to Israel and the Israeli borders and Israeli ports, um, through communication, through talking to them and through working with agencies like the Red Cross, they're able to get the goods across. He said it's difficult, but it hap you know, eventually it comes through. Everything uh, comes through um, with humanitarian work.